Hello there, and welcome to my 100% playthrough of the 2021 Quake Remaster on Nightmare. This is E1M3, The Necropolis. Alright, E1M3, The Necropolis. 65 enemies and 3 secrets. So there's a good deal more enemies this time around. And what is this? A grenade launcher and new enemies, the zombies. So the zombies are a bit of a special case. In order to kill them permanently, you have to jib them like we just did. If you just down them with ordinary guns, they will eventually get back up and keep trying to come after you. Not really a threat, just kind of annoying in big groups. But uh, yeah, so you already see Mr. Ogre spamming. Oh, well look at that. Ooh, maybe you can kill him. Kind of ruin the surprise, but all right, I'll take it. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? I think the fiend might. Oh, he won. Wow. So anyway, I was about to say, yeah, you can see the ogre just spamming grenades. I guess one ricocheted and hit the fiend, which caused the fiend to end fight with him. But I was gonna say, when you get closer to here, you're gonna spawn two fiends, or rather, you're gonna aggro two fiends. So deal with them and then deal with the ogre, but the fiend killed the ogre, so hey, that's nice. So, an effective strategy for fighting pretty much anything in this game, other than like grunts and rottweilers, is to practice the old ancient art form of weapon swapping. So basically that's when you start with one weapon and then swap to one or two others to finish them off. That way you're not using too much ammo from one weapon on one enemy. And weapon swap speeds in Quake are instantaneous, so there's no reason not to. Other than the, you know, conserving ammo shtick. Um, so let's see. I th think I want to save those guys for later. Go ahead and grab those rockets if I can. So we're gonna head left. Grab the nail gun. You're now trapped. There's a ceiling coming down. Axe the button to run downstairs to get out of the way of that crushing ceiling. Open that hatch with the zombies. And then out here... We are going to come across a scrag, for one thing. A couple more scrags. Come on. There we go. And we're also going to be introduced to the strongest non-boss enemy in the game. That big, lovable teddy bear over there. Say hello to the Shambler. Oh yeah. So, the Shambler. What to say about him? He's massive. He shoots lightning bolts at you. He can melee you with his claws. He can either swipe at you with one individual or do an overhead smash like that. If this guy attacks you in melee range, just, just do whatever you gotta do to survive. But his lightning bolt is a hit scan, so you can either take cover to dodge it or get far enough away from him that the bolt cannot reach. Best way to take this guy out is with a combination of weapons, so in this case we'll use the nail gun and the double barreled shotgun. You do not want to use explosive weapons unless you absolutely have to, because shamblers are resistant to explosive damage. They only take half damage from them. So they're far from being useless, as I just demonstrated, but they're not the smartest weapons to use on them either. I usually like to swap between, like, nail gun and shotgun. And yes, we have a second one. He's mad that you killed his friend, and he wants some revenge. Look at those big, fleshy bastards. Sorry, Mr. Shambler, I don't want to hug. You're a little too violent for my taste. You'd look nice just dead. And look at that mouth. No eyes, by the way. Just a... A neck with teeth, essentially. And just big old bodies. I think these guys are probably like 8, 9 feet tall. They're huge. And they're mean. And you'll be seeing plenty of them. Especially in the expansions. I'll tell you, the people who develop the expansions have a love affair with shamblers and fiends. That's something to look forward to. Lots of shamblers and lots of fiends. But we come to a gold key door, which we cannot uh, bypass yet. But oh look, the gold key's right here. But grabbing it is going to spawn a few zombies. So whip out your grenade launcher and just let him have it. 
And then secret one of three is back here, and you probably can't see it in the YouTube video, but on this back wall here, directly across from the key, you can sink down to the water, surface through the under or underwater passage, for a ring of shadows. So this is essentially invisibility. And unlike that piece of crap partial invisibility from Doom, this thing actually makes you fully invisible. And it is uh, quite useful. You can get the drop on a lot of enemies, including this guy. Yeah. Nifty, eh? I think it only lasts for about 30 seconds, so you don't get to keep it for too long. And this ogre came out of that wall, which opened up. I assume it opens up when you grab the gold key. But just take care of him. And then secret two, I believe. Yep, secret two is in this area. So what you want to do is simply drop down here where the zombies were. Go to this wall and bust it open. Or push it open, I should say for a big box of rockets, which I think gives you 10. Yep, and a health box. Uh, also, I don't think there is any f visual difference between 15 health boxes and 25 health boxes. Um, obviously, there is a difference between those two and the 100 health boxes. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Okay. So this one has a thing that resembles a numpad that glows. This one does not. Okay, so I'm going to assume the ones with the glowy numpads are the 25 health, and the ones without them are the 15. Now I'm wondering if that was always the case with those things, and I was just never able to notice it before. Like, that's probably a 25, that's probably a 25. Next time I have to grab health, I'm going to keep an eye out for that, because now I'm curious. I must have that question answered. But I am technically full of health right now, because remember, 50 health cap on Nightmare. Go through the gold key door, there's going to be an ogre immediately to your right, along with a scrag to back him up. Just going to pop him like a balloon. And then come down here, get out of the way of that, that is a spike trap which will squish you. That activates a switch which activates a trap door which drops you down here. To a waterlogged passage that is chock full of zombies. And I mean a lot of zombies. Oh. Oh, huh. I got the one behind him. That was pretty funny. Alright, I think all the zombies are now dead except for that one. And then there is an ogre right here. And another zombie. See, all the zombies do for attacks is tear out chunks of their body and toss it at you. And I think that attack does, uh, I want to say 10 damage, so... Not a whole lot at all, but if you have no armor, it can be a little scary. Especially if you're in the middle of a big group of them. Eh. That's something you definitely do not want. So, let's say we uh, exploit some ogres. Oh, okay, oh, you, you ricocheted off that little nook and it bounced back towards me. Okay, I see how it is. But ordinarily, yeah, you just stand right here. And because the ogres... Well, because they can't aim straight up or down, they just aim it... Oh my goodness. They aim it straight across. And normally it doesn't end that badly. They just keep shooting past me, but this time they were banking them off those stupid little nooks right here and they were hitting me. So that was a colossal waste of armor, but that's okay. We should be alright. Press a switch to open these four doors here. Each of which contains a zombie. And we got nails. We got that ogre's rockets. We have shells. And we have a 25 health. I forgot to look at the top of the box. Oops. Go through this door here, there's two ogres on top of those two high up platforms, but before you take them on, we have a fiend. Yeah. Remember, do the weapon swap tango. Use an explosive, then nails and a shotgun. That's what I like to do. If I can, of course. So first thing you want to do is take out these ogres. Quickly as you can. And killing those ogres opens these sets of bars, which is secret number three. Now, uh, here's a bit of a funny story. In Quake 64, 
this wall right here that I just fruitlessly bashed with my axe, this would be the entrance to the secret map of episode one, because the map that originally contain or the original map that contains a secret exit to the secret map was cut from Quake 64. I can only assume due to time limitations and size limitations and you know limited storage memory on a cartridge and blah blah blah. So the next map, which is the one that contains the secret exit, was cut from Quake 64, and the secret exit wasn't set up there. Well, now that wall does nothing, because the secret exit is in the ordinary map, which is in this version because it's the original PC version. See? Simple as that. Press the switch. Don't worry, that ceiling is not going to crush you. It is instead a door, which opens right here, and is going to hoist you right up. Now, be careful. This fight's going to be a little hairy. Don't do anything. Stand perfectly still. We have two fiends guarding the exit gate. So here's what happens. When you kill those fiends, another fiend will uh, teleport in to replace the one that you killed. And then once you kill all four of those fiends, a final enemy is going to uh, spawn in who guards the gate. And that final enemy just so happens to be a freaking shambler. So... We're going to keep our distance from the fiends. Oh, oh, oh goodness. Ooh, that ended badly. I didn't think he would cover that distance, but he did, so whoopsie. Yeah, see what I mean? Look at that bastard jump around all over the place. Do not underestimate the fiends. That would be the last mistake you ever make. I could have died there very easily. So let's go ahead and take out that fiend. And that spawns in Mr. Shambler. Fortunately, the Shambler is quite easy. Just take pot shots at him. Duck around cover. Get him to use his melee and back away from him. And take him out. Simple as that. Phew. Had a couple of close calls there that I shouldn't have had. First with those stupid ogres that wouldn't cooperate with me. And then those fiends that jumped all the way from here to there. Yeah. Fiends can jump great distances. So, do not underestimate them. Take them out as quickly as you can, but do not panic. Because if you panic, you die. Easy as that. And that is the Necropolis. Starting to get gradually more difficult, but we get introduced to the zombies in this map. And I believe that's the only new enemy. And then that ending fight, yeah. Even, even today, I find that ending fight to be a little bit nerve-wracking. I mean, if it were just the two fiends in the Shambler, it wouldn't be too bad. But, of course, you have an additional two fiends that spawn in when you kill the first two. And then, after you kill those two fiends, you have a Shambler to contest with. So, yeah. And you can skip that final fight if you want, but, pff, I mean, come on. Where's the fun in that, right? We are here to get all the kills and find all the secrets. No stone left unturned, and no enemy left alive. But yes, that was the Necropolis, and the map that contains the secret exit is actually coming up next. So until that next level comes, I will see you all then. Bye-bye.